Hi, I'm Daniel, and this is Asheville Weekly, episode 26. Hold on, 26. That's six months of Asheville Weekly every Sunday. This week is Easter, so everybody who works in a bank is gonna get a day off. At Shallow Lambus Castle, we aim to board the top two floors, and the sweeper should arrive just in time to clean the roads. And hopefully, the Volvo skip lorry has swerved the Grim Reaper and will come back from the dead. It's alive! People are stealing things. Trying it. Your employment will be terminated. Rinsing, rinsing, boy, please. Yeah, well, Let's turn her on. And you try and turn it round and put it in the bottom. <laughs> Keep going and going and going and going. It's a big boy. So the rims were taken out because my screens are so large. The crack is very small. You're gonna fist it out. That has taken an almighty slap. Victory is ours. I shut up, man. Many a true word are said in jest. Uh, Monday morning. Still in the car park, walking with my coffee and my lunch in my hand. Uh, it's 5.28, getting in as early as I can, having a meeting with the drivers uh, to talk about something that happened over the weekend. Ready to go. So one of the drivers, um, Park where he shouldn't park, there's no excuse. And there's an entire Facebook forum of a village of people all saying things about Asheville. I spent so long growing this company, like seven days a week. You're talking years and years and years of graft to fixing problems every day. One thing like this, somebody goes and parks on the pavement, and some like a hundred odd comments. But now something like somebody parking who said they don't want the lorries in the area anymore because somebody parked on the pavement. Granted, it's the wrong thing to do, and I'm gonna go into the yard now and speak to all the drivers. It's the only way to do it. I need to address it myself. It's not for me to delegate to Terry to tell Terry to do it. It's important to me, and I wanna tell all the drivers in no uncertain terms. You do that again, then it's the end. It's as simple as that. You know, you do years of hard work, and then all of a sudden people just do, just turn up and just do something silly just to block and in, block the entire pavement so you can't even get past with a push chair. It, it, it's just not in my control. Like, how am I supposed to control everybody the entire time, all day, every day? I can't. How can I control all of them like that? You think that people will exercise common sense and, you know, and be courteous. Obviously not. So now I'm going to have to explain why you need to do that. And hopefully the problem is eradicated. Morning. I'm in the yard, tie fitters here nice and early, lorries here, and let the meeting start. Three minutes to six. Uh, meeting's done, but have a look at that. Oh my goodness. Wow. Well, that's not a slow puncture, is it? What's white, my man? <laughs> not that you could miss it. Meeting's done in the yard. The boy, the boy said, well, you got another puncture in the back as well. Yeah, you can hear the air. Uh, I can hear it, yeah. That's why it's essential to check the lorry in the morning. Well done, you. This man clearly checks his lorry. Lights are working. Well done, mate. The boys are coming over now with the small eight-ton digger. There it is. We're bringing the eight-ton digger over. I'm gonna scrape the road here. So we start the week nice and fresh. Then everyone will go on the wheel wash. Tail's already made a start, just scraping it there. When our road sweeper comes, this will be a lot better. But get this up nice and early It'll be a nice dry day it's gonna be warm this week so we have the problem at the moment with a bit of mud but when it gets warmer <laughs> then we're gonna have a problem of dust so then we're gonna to have to turn the sprinklers back on and wet the road there's a lot of filming happening on the phone today uh, you can see the boys are making their way around so you've got the eight ton machine doing the bulk of the work and then you've got a man with a shovel cleaning it up as well drivers don't track anything out so they come off the wheel wash and they'll be going on to hard standing so there we go. Uh, someone said to me that one of the cutting edges on the loading shovel uh, was going well this is the big loading shovel this is the 586 that cutting edge while it's wearing a lot in the corners this cutting edge is okay let's go check the other loading shovel before I go over to the other loading shovel I'm just checking here there we go, we've got plenty of grease in it. Therefore, all the working parts uh, being greased to ease the wear. 
We've got half in here. Let's check the other one as well. All right, here we are, the 566. Let's have a look at this cutting edge. Yep, this cutting edge has seen better days. Right, we have to change this car. Oh my goodness. Have we completely worn that away? We need to sort this cutting edge out before we start damaging this bucket. Let's have a look at the automatic greasing system. This one's a bit lower. Still have some grease. All the working parts look like they're still being greased. Video team are in now and the carpenter's in. Uh, I'm gonna go and have a look at the office because of some of you lot's comments over the weekend when you watched Asheville Weekly episode 25. Let's have a look at my new desk. A lot of you pointed out it looks like a six. Bear with me. When I'm sitting here being king of the castle, king of the castle, on this side, it's an A. But I wasn't looking from your side. I still like the design of it, so I think we need to move it round. Marek? Yes? Let's move this round. I suppose I could do that. Hey, but listen. It's okay. Yeah. I, I don't want no leg. Yeah, this is one. No, I don't want oh, any leg. It's a big problem. But it might be your problem, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe small. Maybe you feel small. Nah, long legs. <laughs> yeah. Long legs, man. Maybe. And wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. What about. Pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up. No, pick yeah. it up. Pick it up. Yeah. Yeah? Watch. This. Oh, maybe this. here. This is okay. <laughs> nah, I don't want to change all the TV and everything. Nah, let's go this way. Yeah, this let's go this way. Let's go back this way. Yeah, this. Alright, we need to do it like this because actually this is better for me because I put my screens here and then when there's two people sitting there, I just move my chair. So it's actually better. But I don't want no leg. Maybe fix, fix this wall. Fix to the wall, yeah? yeah. But remember, I have to be able to stand on here, yeah? Mm -hmm. Let's build a frame in this wall, and that way I can leave the TV there. When I'm done, chair goes here, move around here. Hopefully now, you can see that this is an A. We've already started putting ply on these walls. These sockets and stuff you can see up here, this is because the television that's in my main office at the moment with the cameras, that is gonna go here, then there's gonna be another television there. We went into the container and we grabbed a load of stuff that we've been storing from jobs, uh, speakers and stuff like that. Some speakers from our old shop in Kings Road from many years ago. All those ceiling speakers, they're gonna be going in here. Uh, the toilet that's gonna be going in is a Rocker W&W &W unit. That was again from our showroom in Kings Road. So everything which we can reuse use we are reusing and once the ply is done we're then going to put plasterboard on the walls here as well and I've decided that the walls in here are going to be wallpapered I think that's the best way for me to have a textured effect at the basement salvage project I believe all the ventilation and air conditioning work has started let's have a look plasterboard is already on some of the walls and the fuse board has gone in the ventilation unit is already up it's a big boy. The air conditioning unit is about to go up in a minute. Uh, the ventilation unit is 78 kilos and the air conditioning unit is 50 kilos, very heavy. Let me show you what we had to do. Once again, we don't want to puncture the membrane. These rails are fixings for the ventilation and the aircon unit. We've put our fixings through the delta plugs. And then this is here and then the units attached to this and sit about here. Great, we can see the fuse board is here in place. Here's our incoming power, and this is the alarm system for the pumps. That's enough from here. Let's head to Castle Shallow Lambus. Here are Jan's. Gonna get my gear out the back. Gonna put this on, but sun's come out. That'll be a bit hot. I think the weather's beginning to go that way. So, wanna one of these instead. First thing I see at the front of the house is that the block and beam is in, in this area for the front extension. And we've built up with the block work here and now the bricks are starting. So the way this looks now, you can get a real idea of how much bigger the front entrance is gonna be. The insulation that's gonna go on top of the block and beam right here has arrived. In this area and the area on the other side, we're gonna use the new one and on the rest of the ground floor, we're gonna reuse the old one. Last week, I showed you the ventilation pipes in this area and the other area, where you can see a load of ventilation pipes on the floor. These are for the first floor. Now, remember this, because when I go upstairs, I'm gonna show you the other end of these pipes. So they're coming through the opening here, and the manifold for upstairs is gonna be in the ceiling void of the utility area here. But it's gone to the rooms, and then we've run it down to here, and then we've just left the pipes as long as we possibly can. And as you can see, it's taking up most of the space in here. So we're up on the scaffold, looking at the parapet wall that you saw last week. Now we're beginning to finish the brickwork. So this is just above the bifold doors that you always see below. If you have a look, we have soldiers and then we have a course of one, two, three, and there'll be a fourth row of bricks here. Then we're gonna do a step out feature with the bricks. So when we get here, one brick like this, and then we're gonna begin to step out a little bit like this. We're gonna step out a little bit more and then 
we're going to come back in like this. The options here were this or a masonry feature, and we showed it to Jan and Steph, and they preferred this. In this area, you can see the ventilation ducting has now been fixed to the block and beam. So sooner or later, we'll start working out what our final height for our suspended ceiling is going to be. You still put something between. Eh? Something between where? The skip is full, man. You can't be doing that. The skip is full. You, this is, even your own firm take liberties. That skip is full. It's meant to be a level load. And this man's saying that there's more space. Tell me where the more space in that is. It's full. Under the pallets. Under the pallets, yeah, it's of course. Under the plasterboard. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are on the first floor and some of these walls have already been plasterboarded and the ceiling has been done. You can see when the suspended ceiling is actually in place, how much you actually see of the ventilation system. It's very limited once it's all closed up. Have a look here. What Adam's doing is he's painting the wall in PVA. Then we're going to use dot and dab and we're going to fit the plasterboard on this. So we're not going to build anything here to attach it to. We're going to throw some adhesive and then we're going <laughs> to... Yeah. Ah, do you know, you can leave that in, I don't care. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna put some adhesive on the back of the plasterboard, dot and dab. Uh, we're gonna put a spirit level on it and we're gonna line the wall up like that. I can't believe I just walked into that. In this room, you can see the height where the suspended ceiling is going to be. In plenty of places, people have bespoke wardrobes, but generally, people's bespoke wardrobes are a maximum height of 2.4 because that's a sheet of MDF. Now, the ceiling height that we were going to have, we were lower than 2.4. If we use the normal MF ceiling system, we would be around here, which would mean you couldn't have the 2.4 cupboards. So what we've done, we've gone for this GTEC suspended ceiling system. So this lifts it high enough that you can have 2.4 high cupboards and it finishes completely flush. So you don't have any gaps or overhang. When you see inside all of the walls and the ceilings, you can see this ventilation pipe going everywhere. For instance, it's coming up here, it's cutting across, then it's tucked in nicely with the steel and it's running across here into another room. We have copper pipes, we have uh, ventilation, we have electrical, we have absolutely everything in the ceiling and none of it is in the way of anything else. Also here, you can see the height of the suspended ceiling is here also, and the boys are just creating it in the hallway too. Here we are in another room on the first floor. You can see the suspended ceiling level is here. Our first fix is done. We also have our ventilation pipe, and now we are putting the insulation in. So sooner or later, we're gonna be ready to close this room up also. On the top floor, this hallway area is now completely boarded and we've had to create a new space. Now this now is a room which is locked, which only the site foreman and supervisors have the code to this. This is for all the deliveries with valuable bits and pieces, like for the underfloor heating, all the thermostats, the home automation system, um, any uh, taps, shower mixers, all of that sort of stuff has to come here and stay here. Because on a building site like this, there's so many people going in and out. I'm not saying that people are stealing things but things do go missing. It could be a simple mistake like somebody sweeping up and they're putting rubbish in one of these and they throw a thermostat in there and it goes in the skip. We lock everything in here and keep it safe. Uh, just had a phone call come through, um, someone at the site where we're delivering that um, they have been contacted by the um, head of the residence association where that driver mounted the pavement, pavement and he parked. I mean, I apologized. I was told on Saturday evening, um, I answered straight away. I addressed it on Monday morning and it hasn't happened since. The driver's been reprimanded and all the drivers have been told in no uncertain terms that if you park on the pavement and block a footpath that no one can walk across, your employment will be terminated with immediate effect under gross misconduct. And now I've seen there's another letter has come through saying what, like, I'm not sure what exactly I'm supposed to do. I cannot, I cannot drive every truck myself and someone parked on a pavement wrongly and it's been addressed. Like to keep going and going and going and going and going when I've put a solution in place. I'm not like, I'm not entirely sure what, what they want me to do. Anyway, uh, having a look here, we've had to pull up the ply because the shower tray, which is gonna be here, it has a different sort of waste on it and we wanna sink it down as low as we can. So we've opened up everything and we're gonna sink the shower tray into the joist and then we're gonna put the ply up against it so the shower tray is as low as possible and almost looks flush. Uh, that's it for here, I'm heading back to the yard. I'm gonna check the work that's happening in the yard, which I instructed earlier, because we have a train coming tomorrow. And I also have a Zoom with the council. So I need to address a number of issues. So I'm gonna leave you in the capable hands of Dan who will create a montage.
<laughs> I'm back in the yard. While I was out of the yard, uh, the plan has definitely taken shape. Uh, the boys are still carrying on with the 4 by 2 work over here. While I wasn't here, Michael dragged Noel up here and Noel is welding a piece of steel. Because this part of it is not going to be supported at all, we're going to put a piece of steel here to hold all the weight and then bolt all the timber to that. So Noel has stopped working on the skip lorry, which I believe we can try and turn on now, and he's welding a piece for us. You know what's good? Working on my desk, that's actually father and son. So there's the sensei and the student working together. So hopefully dad will teach him everything so he can learn for many years to come as well. Noel's already done it. You can see this U-shaped section here. This will fit on the A and this will support all the weight. Uh, we made this from bits and pieces we had left from jobs, which you normally see on the scaffold next to the kitchen. So put it all together, Noel's welded it and made it nice and strong. Let's see if something's going right today. Get ready. Three, two, one. It's alive. And I must say it's sounding a lot smoother than the old one. Give it some. Sounding really good, no knocking. Really happy with that, it's in, and this lorry will soon go back on the road. The diesel is running through and it is sounding good. Gonna go and have a look in the other yard uh, before my Zoom with the council. So we're getting on. The entire wall over there is clean. All the material on the top has been brought down. Everything went to the front has been brought to the back. It's completely been shifted around. Just give another clean of the walkway. Plenty of room here to offload. Plenty of room for parking tonight. Well done, lads. No matter what happens, no matter what's going on, you have to keep moving. You have to keep moving forward. So while I try to plug holes and put out fires, mend relationships, make new relationships, no matter what's going on, you need to just keep going, keep going, keep going, and try and fix as much as you can. I'm glad I've come back in here and seen this and the skip lorry started. Just having a look at some bits from uh, last week's episode, which was number 25. I had my Zoom with the council. In all honesty, it went really well. It was, um, they were, it wasn't a council, it was councillors, so people who were there to uh, represent the people they've been elected in. And they were actually really reasonable. I explained everything to them, I told them the measures I had put in place, and I was just completely honest. I told them the action uh, that I had taken, and you know, they were, they understood, but at the same time, they've got people on their back and they need to deliver to their constituents. So we discussed the plan, which is a happy medium. I've told them that when the road sweeper arrives, I'm gonna uh, clean the road um, free of charge at our expense continuously, you know, to give something back to the people in the local area. And hopefully we can come to an agreement where everyone's happy. Correction. It's very difficult to make everyone happy. Perhaps we can come to a compromise where the residents can be a little bit more happy. But yeah, a decent meeting. Uh, Tuesday morning and we're in the yard. Um, we're just moving around some material. The train should be here in about an hour. Um, we've just had an email come through to say that the train tomorrow is cancelled because there's a problem with a locomotive. So one today and not one tomorrow, so we're one train down. But we're more than happy that we're prepared in the yard. Um, we have a small maintenance issue uh, with the track that needs to be looked at and Terry is going to run us through what needs to be done. Aren't you Terry? I'll do my best. And uh, Simon the accountant isn't in today. Uh, today's the day that Simon completes on his new house. Congrats to Simon. Congratulations Simon. Um, if you guys do a little flashback here, you'll see the gift that we got for Simon to put in his new house. This is from the entire team at QPR. They've signed this. So let's hope that he puts it up. All right, I'll meet you, up, I'll meet you back up at the level crossing, yeah? Well, clearly we didn't think this through um, because we've got here and it's locked. <laughs> so Terry's just gone to grab the key quickly. What's that, Keith? What's happening? Would you send me in a lorry that would go and do a delivery of some blocks for me? How could we work that? You, you, can, put, you, you can put them inside a grab lorry. I could take the grab off and, put, and it's got a quick hitch and I could put a hook on it. If you're putting a pallet on the back, as long as there's the straps can go round it and I can put a hook on the end of it, I can deliver it for you. Can you do it today? Today, Jesus. Um, I'll, I'll have to ask, I'll, I'll ask in five minutes. Uh, today would be ideal, see what you can do, or if not, tomorrow morning. Hey, rude boy, rude boy, rude boy, rude boy, calm down. How much are you going to pay me? Whatever you want, dude, within reason. Woohoo, woohoo, woo rinsing, rinsing, boy, please. Yeah, well, what we, what we can. <laughs> but when I get there, you're just going to load me quick time, yeah? Yeah, rapido. 
rapido, and then I'm going to go to the site, and then I'll just go well, off. I want, I want to put them on, though. Yeah, no, no. if you have a hook, we'll have all the blocks ready on pallet. All right, this one, I need, I need you to have two men on the ground, put the straps around it, and put yeah, the hook yeah, on, yeah, lift yeah, it, yeah, and then just tell the, tell the site the same thing, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on one sec, one sec, one sec, one sec. Roll, 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 roll. Look, 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 look. Hold on one sec. Yeah. That's actually our train going past. Sorry, Beaky, you're in the middle of filming. That's our train going past. So that train's going to go down there, turn around, come this way, and then reverse in here. So we've got about 45 minutes till it's here. Sorry, Beaky, go on. All right, fine. Let me call you back and tell you what I can do today, yeah? Shut up, idiot. All right, shut up, man. Hyping, man. Trying it. That's a... Uh, uh, that's that's Owen from MP Moran's. Uh, uh, click here to see the episode where I went to MP Moran's and visited Owen. <laughs> he don't know he was being recorded. <laughs> Sorry. No, 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 no. Don't apologize. When work calls. There we go. <laughs> you had a choice to come here and film or do your work, yeah? And you chose to go and film. I mean, you chose to do your work. Credit to you. <laughs> Credit to you. If you would have come here and left all them lorries like that, just to film, I'd have been like, what are you doing? I'd have so, probably sacked myself. Yeah, so good man. Well done, priorities. So we've got these, this was picked up by a network rail inspection. So the network rail boundary is here. Everything that side is network rail's priority. Everything this side, or responsibility, sorry. Everything this side is Asheville. It was picked up that the stretcher bars here were slightly bent. There was no damage to them. He, he can't really Hello, swipe his phone much because he's got no soul. His soul and spirit have left his body. He's an empty vessel. Yeah, That's why he is. can't swipe with his finger. Minutes, Nothing to do with the phone up. that so I've provided. You want to carry on, vampire? I've got no soul. you got no soul, yeah, no this, spirit. This sunlight's starting to burn my skin. <laughs> 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 so these stretcher bars, it was picked up. These stretcher bars were ever so slightly bent. They weren't damaged, but they're bent because the points were ever so slightly out of line. And you can see from this sleeper, it's twisted ever so slightly. So that's happened just over time and wear on the track. So we had to get an independent track inspection done. They come out and they measured up a few things and they figured out that it's out of square enough that we have to have some work done. If it was within a certain tolerance, it would be considered track standard. As it is, it's on the limit, so we have to get the work done before it gets any worse. So they would have to cut this track out, shunt one of the tracks slightly that way, because they have to pull this track forward. We then have to cut two tracks further back to create two five meter closure rails. There's a weld further up here on network rails boundary. Because of our work this side, it means we have to take care of that. So we'll have to put a nine meter closure rail in this side just to bring the track back square again, which should hopefully square up this sleeper and these stretcher bars. And just that, that switch there, the handle's got a little, it's a little bit bent, but it works. They checked it, it works okay. Let's see if it works. Wait, what's going on? You need to get to the gym. You're an idiot. <laughs> Wait, what's going on? Wait, no, I'm not, I'm not joking. Oh, right, there we go. There you go. So the, the switch works okay. The track advisor said that he was happy enough for the rail to continue, but it's work that needs doing. So we need a bit of work done in the yard ASAP. Terry, we've got 90 days. Yeah, we're 90 days from the initial inspection, yeah. Yeah, so we've got 90 days from the inspection. It's not dangerous, but it does need to be done. I had a lot of questions in the past. People saying, why do you keep so much stock? Why do you keep so much stock? Last week, uh, we had two trains and we had a train on Friday. So we were working Saturday and Monday. We're working this morning. You can see the difference in last week and this week. The material was here, now the material is all the way here. This part here will be completely gone by the time we start. That's why we need to keep up. While it looks like a lot of material, when we hit it hard, what are we moving a day tell? 1,500 tonne on, like if we, if we hit it hard, we're hitting 1,500 tonne a day and there's 1,600 odd tonne on a train. So if we're working, six days a week going into a job and we're only getting five trains, we can quickly run out. That's why we have to keep such stock levels in here. Uh, talk to me, Operative, talk to me. I'm trying to get one in today, but at the moment it looks like they'll both be tomorrow, but I'm trying to move stuff around to do one today. Right, okay. Um... I could do one today desperately, Dan. I'm, 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 de well, I'm desperate, Dan. I'm desperate, Dan. I'm desperate. All right, cool. All right, bye. Handbrake off. Footbrake. Footbrake on. Footbrake off. Handbrake on. Oh, little problem. That's why you need to check all these things. Put a new engine in, but you still need to check the lorry from front to back before it goes out on the road. No will tell us what it is. We'll call Volvo, make an order, put that back on. Need the lorry to be 100%. What is it? What is it? I thought you just said something. There was a problem. Okay, I'm hearing. Your head again. Don't jump in. We're going for a test drive. So everything underneath is completely fine. Cameras are all working. 
Very nice, very helpful. All right, let's see how this feels out on the road. There we go, that's two. Second, three. There we go, four. Good man, feels nice and smooth. Engine sounds really good, no knocking, plenty of power. Loving it. The vehicle turning left is working. Check my mirrors, check all around. Test drive is going well. And we are back in the repair bay. Had a delivery here. I think I know what this is. My new body props. Had our old body props for a while, which we made ourselves. But I thought I'd buy new ones. I prefer this part of it to be black, but they were half sold to me because they were yellow. We'll put these on the body of the lorry, so when we go underneath, we're 100% safe. You put the knife in the wrong pocket. What? Should have been my pocket. Thanks, Noel. <laughs> Having a look at my desk, uh, what you saw Noel making yesterday, I can see it on the inside here. This is giving it some structure. Uh, the guys have asked me again if they could put a leg here. No leg. I'm not going to have any supports on the other side. The boys are just a little bit concerned because I said this has got to be strong enough for me to jump up and down on it. We've run all the noggins and the construction here, but the guys are still not sure if it's going to be strong enough. So I did ask if we should get Noel to make another bit of steel and put it on this side, but they said no they may put a steel frame in here. So another U-shape in here connected to that one. You don't need to show me. Here's how you test okay. it, yeah? Fix it, take off this mm -hmm. and sit there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if both of you <laughs> sit here, if the two of you sit here and it doesn't snap, then it works. Because I could put my two screens here and then two people sit here and then I just move my chair over there. I can see round TV on the wall, good to go. And now it's actually an A. It's Wednesday afternoon, I'm in the yard. I had a lot of meetings this morning and I'm back and I've had some deliveries and I'm standing in front of my desk, which is an A. Yes, the first letter in the alphabet, A. It's not six, it's not a G. I've taken what you said on board, I've turned it round and now it's an A. Not only when I turned it round, it was a lot more work. Now I've had to support the end of it. So this will be gone and this will just be floating in midair. Let's open up the deliveries. Right, firstly, we've got one of the HDMI cables. This is the 15 meter cable for the television that's going on this wall. And I've also bought myself a couple of adapters. So a few of you said to um, run Cat 5s and then put an extender at one end and a receiver. I'm not gonna do that. You know, it's really annoying when you take a HDMI cable and then you try and turn it around and put it in the bottom. These will go on the HDMI and mean you don't need to turn the HDMI. You can just put these on there and it makes the connection a whole lot easier and takes the pressure off the cable. I'm gonna use this handy adjustment tool, which is a screw I found. Not the best way of opening things, but we use what we have and we overcome challenges. Let's get this open. At some point this year, it's very annoying. No, it's gonna open this way. This is the most secure box in history. Oh. There we go. This is my bracket. So I'm gonna have two 40 inch curved screens on my desk and I didn't want to have them on stands. So I'm gonna have one stand which holds the both of them. What I've ordered is actually meant for three screens because my screens are so large. Let's see, this will go here. I should be able to have no gap between my screens and I won't see this to remind me that there should have been a third screen there if I was a reasonable human being. This is what it'll be like with my screens. Hi guys, it's Yanni from Yanniwise. I'm in my bathroom here. I'm going to have a shower here, which is uh, one meter by 120, even though Michael was reluctant to give me another 200 mil. My little water cylinder to ensure that I always have hot water. Being in this yard and having to have a cold shower at five o'clock in the morning if I try and train really early, uh, that is not gonna be comfortable for me. Back in the video office, we have another delivery. I bought this for the gym. Obviously, it's in the right color, black and yellow. This is gonna require some assembly. I think this is great value for money. This was like 100 quid, and this is fantastic to do sit-ups, uh, to do squats, anything like that. It really helps your form. I just hit my head. Let's put this down. This is what it's gonna look like when it's assembled. There we go. Let's put this in here. Now we're getting somewhere. Nice. Let's see if it works. All right, I'm taking off my boots. Let's go for a side profile. So now I'm gonna give it a go, um, see if it works, see if I can balance on it. If not, I'm gonna take out the iMac behind me and the drone, let's hope I don't. So we go down. Oh, hold on, I'm gonna feel like I'm gonna fall over, hold on. Uh, oh, am I gonna fall over? Am I gonna fall over? <laughs> hey, am I gonna fall over? 
Okay, let's see if I've got the bar behind my neck. It does feel a bit awkward, but I think I've just got to get used to it. In fact, I'm getting used to it already, yes. I can see quite a lot of tire repairs are taking place and let's go and have a look. There is no train today because there was a problem with the locomotive at the quarry. So we're gonna go and have a look how we're getting on in the yard. Even though the train's not here, as we do, we always prepare. In the yard at the moment, uh, fixing a few punctures. Um, I'd say we're probably getting about eight to 10 punctures a day. Like this is like hard work, like this isn't easy. Thank you for that, right in my face. Appreciate that. Yep, as I always say, don't worry about me. Those tires are all going to be scrapped so the rims were taken out of them over here we have four new tires what are going to go on these rims and these are going to the tire funeral home wherever that's going to be uh, the tire fitter he takes that away as scrap it's important to keep on top of tires the entire time that there's a 315 that's for the volumetric that is a drive tire the drivers are really good here when it comes to tires they always say listen i don't like this tire because ultimately it could be their license which is at stake and they have to be as safe as they possibly can on the road if i haven't told you what we spend on tires and repairs um, but you have to try and be resourceful with tires you can fix punctures try not to put two tires together with different treads on them let me give you an example of that on one side of the axle if you've got two tires you want to try to make sure that the treads are as close as possible if you've got one with a lot of tread and one with not a lot left the one with lots of tread is going to wear very quickly you want to try to have two tires which are roughly the same tread depth then your tires will last you a lot longer now you've seen the scrap tires come off the rim now we're going to put new tires on the same rims. Going into the railway yard now. See how we're getting on. Did you train here yesterday? Yeah, I know. And it went down? Yeah, we're working, we're working it, we're moving it. Uh, once again, we're taking all the high piles from the back and we bring all of that to the front as much as we possibly can. Uh, we need to do that because when the machine is up there, we need him to be able to, into the train, slew, drop it. Into the train, turn around, slew, drop it. We need to give them as much space as possible so you can maneuver. Liebherr have ordered a sensor. These things have got so many sensors on them. And Liebherr have made a suggestion. Uh, there's something which they want to fit on this which should help uh, reliability. So yeah, as with everything, it's a work in progress. Let's get up there and have a look at the LH60 up and close. How's it going, Flo? You're just moving it down, yeah? yeah. Ah, the sprinkler's still going there, yeah? You're gonna take all of that and bring it here, yeah? I think the LH60 is such a beast that when it's tracking over these rocks, it's actually, it's actually crushing the rocks. Uh, let, let's, uh, let's try and have a look at that. Flow tracker forward a tiny bit for me, please. Nice and controlled. Yeah. Looks like the LH60 has made us some type one. Very nice. Flo's jumped out to go and get a spot of lunch. Let's see if I can help. I'm not gonna lie, it is super comfortable in here. Now here's the trouble, I don't remember my machine making that sound before. Let's turn her on. Uh, this is to give you an idea of when you're up here, how steep it is actually down, and to give you an idea and perspective of where the train actually is. I want it to go further out. I think I need to go closer. All right, I'm at the max, man. It's a bit. You know what it is? I haven't been on this in so long that I'm getting kind of slow, but I can't be having that. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna have to stay on this for a little while and do some practice. I can't be having people faster than be on this. Ooh. Like, like here, I just want to be like that. There you go.
turning the revs up now, yeah? Okay, here we go. Daniel, Daniel trying to add a bit of value here. Here we go. I want to move this material from this back area over here. Let's go down. There we go. You can tell that I'm not on this machine every day. <laughs> Boom. There we shifted quite a bit of material from the back uh, to the front. Uh, helped out a little bit. I'm not as fast as the boys because I'm not on the machine as much, but it's very therapeutic. It's good to be up here alone. You get a chance to think because it completely takes your mind off everything else you're doing because it takes so much concentration to ensure you're doing it right. A few weeks ago, uh, you saw Eric here at um, Yanni's house. This man here normally drives the Asheville van, the big one that we call the tank. So what he does every day, he goes to all the builders, merchants, he goes and gets the materials, he moves the guys around so he's in the van all day. He actually has a class two license and he's making a changeover. Um, he's quit Asheville Inc, the construction firm, so he's handed in his notice and now he's going working for Asheville Aggregates. So tomorrow is his first day, he's going to jump in a lorry with somebody who's very experienced and he's gonna go out of them. Now I gave him a driving lesson on um, Saturday. Uh, we went in the template Volvo and we went up and down. Uh, think about them older lorries, you have to take your time. Like it's not a Formula One car. You have to feed your way through the gears. You have to feed, you have to, you can't just, you can't, you can't do that. You have to feed your way through the gears, ease your foot off the clutch. So we wish him luck. Hopefully he can gain some experience and he can be a good driver within the firm. It's all part of the Asheville group. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, mate. It's Thursday morning, I'm in the yard. I've turned up here. I've had seven drivers not turn up. I've got lorries parked up. I've got a train that's cancelled. I've got other lorries broken down. I've got people giving me back chat. I've got all my build jobs behind. I don't understand, like, what is the point of all of this nonsense? Like, I come in here, I'm just running a firm to pay a bunch of people to do bloody nothing, and I'm just killing myself. What am I killing myself for? I'm treading water. Do all of this thing, get the work. When you, to get the work, you have to jump through hoops. Then you get the work. You don't get paid to do the work. And after you don't get paid, even if you do get paid, they try to knock you down on how much money you're getting, or they pay you late. They're meant to pay you on 30 days. They pay pay you on 60 days or they pay you on 90 days and by the time the money comes in you owe the money out anyway to your suppliers so you're trying to grow a firm but they're just trying to take you backwards to answer what is the point I've just grown this big machine just to pay a bunch of people to do nothing it's just a point you know furthermore furthermore breaking news I'm gonna pack it in forget all this nonsense I can just go I just go home and just go to sleep for a month and really rethink what I'm doing out here so I forget all this nonsense everything in the yard is for sale I'm packing it in I'm finished there's no point. All you do is come in here and tread water, yeah? So we're done, finished. April Fools. However, many a true word are said in jest. Apparently tomorrow's a uh, bank holiday. Thankfully, this isn't the Bank of England, Barclays, NatWest, HSBC, Royal Bank of Scotland, Allied. So we'll all be in work tomorrow, won't we, Glenn? Yeah. <laughs> Today, STS are collecting the sweeper. The sweeper's gonna come back here. Um, you've seen in previous episodes, um, I was down at MP Moran's in Watford. Well, this is why it's good to have a good network of people around you. See, at the moment, Moran's are flat out busy, and one of our grab lorries is actually on hire with Moran's delivering building materials. So I haven't actually used my grab lorries for building materials, but I did spec them to do it. So the bucket on it, it's a quick release, so you can pull two things like this, disconnect the bucket, and then you can attach a hook, and you can move pallet of bricks, pallets of blocks, anything like that. So Dimitri's out doing that. So we're gonna try and pop down to Moran's and show you Dimitri being loaded down there. So you're out driving, are you? Yeah, I've got no other choice. We've got hundreds of them parked up. Really? Mm, I'm hoping a couple are back on Tuesday. The way you depressed today, what's happened to you today? Oh, ah. mate, you don't wanna know. Oh, nothing's probably not happened to me a hundred times. Oh, let me tell you what's happened, yeah? Go on. Somebody was in the yard this morning, jumped into a lorry they don't drive. He's put oil in the yeah. lorry. And he's gone out on the road. Then he's pulled over and he stopped and he said, there's a red uh, warning on the dash for oil. I said, well, turn the lorry off, fine. 
He, he turns the ignition back on and it says that there is no more red warning and it said lorry, the lorry is filling with oil. Leave it six minutes. How can the lorry be filling with oil if we're not putting any oil in the lorry because we're out on the road? Then there was nothing on the dashboard and it said the dashboard was fine. I've um, sent Scania out to it because I've uh, hopefully it's a problem with some sort of oil sensor or something like that. So now Scania are gonna go out to it and I pray and I hope that it's not an engine because if it's an engine, not putting oil in it, that's just pure neglect. At least you have days like I but uh, that is, that's not what I want. I don't want to have a day like yours. I want to have a good day. Uh, what else did I bring you for? Oh, yeah. They were doing a, a rap video outside the yard yesterday. Outside your yard? Yeah. Yeah. Fella comes up to me. Well, this fella wants to fight now or something. He said, uh, I'll see you. He said, you're on Daniel Ashford. <laughs> yeah, I said, yeah, I said, he's main man. I said, yeah, he's only got me because he wanted to put his ratings up. <laughs> <laughs> Did you did you get involved in the rap video? Did you put your chain over your neck and turn your hat back? Or no, anything? no, 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 because he was jumping about. He gave a lot of good, and he was proper. He was proper going for it. But anyway, so you don't know what the lorry with the engine's gone on the lorry or not? No, I'll let you know. Oh, my heart is broken as well as yours. Mm. What time are you leaving work? Uh, seven or eight o'clock tonight. You see, what's the time? Two minutes past four. You're going home. What a load of <laughs> rubbish. <laughs> yeah, I know you're on the roads. So I'm gonna tell my drivers to be careful. I don't know about. I've heard about your driving. Oh, my, my, yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not going that far from the yard, so let's go round top. They're not going to see me. I'll let you know what happens with this engine. Go on, mate. I'll speak to you soon. Uh, we've had a train in. We're running super low on material. Uh, just going to take a walk out to the maintenance area on the DAF tipper that we showed you uh noel was just replacing a slack adjuster earlier so we're just going to have a look at the new one what's been put on there other than that pretty good i'm just going to tip this up so i can show you the slack adjuster and i've gone and had a look here like i say lorries don't lie look at that for a telltale sign that has taken an almighty slap that looks like the cutting edge of the shovel that's gone and hit that Watch it, yeah? Watch it. I'm gonna give it some, yeah? So on these lorries, the brakes tend to automatically tighten themselves up. And the slack adjuster does exactly that. It takes the slack out. Here's the old one here. And you can see the new one has been put on the lorry there. And you can tell it's lovely and new because it's the only thing that's not covered in dirt. This is the shut off valve on the heater. So this basically goes in the dashboard here. When you turn off your heating, this is what shuts it off. Now, this was leaking a little bit. So we saw a bit of uh, water coming down here and we worked out it was this. So we had to strip out all of this and change this valve. Now, working well, no more leaks. You can see the wheel wash working. So the water on there, as it comes through, it goes to the back tank. This tank fills up over the filter into the next tank, over the filter into the tank after. So you can see it working perfectly in unison. Hopefully here you can see exactly why we were doing all the work yesterday and why we were taking the material off the top. The LH60 is taking a bucket, slewing, drop it behind him. You don't want the LH60 moving around and having to track. He can track between the carriages, but you want him in the same place. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom. That's what you want it to do. And as you can see by the space we created, that's exactly what's happening. That's the quickest way to do it and best practice. You don't want any obstructions or anything in the way. You want it to be as simple as possible with as much space as possible around. I love to be from this viewing point. You can see here a concrete lorry just going out. Adrian's just loaded and he's about to go straight back out on the road. Nobody actually knows I'm here. Not that I'm that inconspicuous, but I can stay here and I could just see the yard and what's going on. I can still take phone calls. I like it up here, it's peaceful. Here we are in MP Moran's in Watford. We've come to meet Dimitri quickly to see what he is loading. I'm trying to get back as early as I can because the sweeper's going to be coming from STS and I don't want to miss that. And again, I'm struggling to put on a high vis. There he is, I see him. How are we doing? Right, Dimitri's loading already. It's a big old yard, isn't it? Having a look here, you can see we've taken the bucket off. So when we put the hook on, the quick hitch connections are here. So we've just unclipped the bucket and we put this on and now we've changed this into a delivery truck. Let's go, Dimitri. They're gonna adjust themselves. If you remember a couple of weeks ago, you'll see that I bought all of these, but they're definitely coming in handy. Um, Dimitri can't use the three meter ones because you imagine they're three meters, meter underneath, meter on the side. They're far too short. So he's using the five meter straps, which are certified up to three tons. The way I've designed these bodies, uh, like we have a step just over here so you can get in and out of the body very comfortably. Uh, and Dimitri's got all his gear on. Look, there we go. There's a step right there. It makes it easier to get in and out of the back and do all these sorts of work. It's also very very handy when working on utility work. 
It's really handy that Dimitri is a very steady man on the crane as well. We're detaching the straps that are around these and we're putting them down. But the last set that we put on, we're going to leave the straps around those. So when we go to offload it, it's actually easier because the straps are already around it. Moran's have a man on the forklift here. He's putting the straps around to help us. As soon as he gets the straps in place, you hook them on, lift them into place. So we're going to put 10 pallets in total on this. Uh, with 10 pallets, we will be at 11 tonne. At 11 tonne, we're very underweight as we can go up to 16 tonne on these. I'm still here, you can see, mid loading. So Glenn has gone to grab the drone. I've shown you all Moran's before. Huge place, massive establishment. I love coming here because it gives me something to aim for. I mean, look at this setup. Shout out to Owen, who's not here. Probably skiving somewhere, not doing a day's work. Sounds about right. If you were here, you could defend yourself, but you're not. Obviously, when we're using the crane, put the leg down, basically nearly lifts the front wheel off the floor. Yesterday, with what Dimitri had to do, he disconnected the bucket this morning, left the bucket in the yard. He's come in to do his day work, and at the end of the day, when he goes back to the yard, then he's gonna reconnect the bucket. So easiest thing to do is lift it up on the forklift, and when you put it up on the forklift, put the straps underneath the pallet, drop the forklift down, straps over the top, drop it in place, clip it on. It's at this point, it's a little bit tricky. You see, it's very tight in the body, and the crane is under strain, and that part of the crane is nearly straight up. Dimitri's making it look easy, but this is tricky, and he's trying to fit it in around all the others. He'll get it, because the uh, crane was screaming. He basically picked up the block behind, lifted that onto the top, and when he lifted that onto the top, he then put the front one on. Now he's going to pick up that one and drop that in place behind it. So we have to do a bit of Tetris. Dimitri is now putting down the crane on top of all the blocks and he's making sure that he tucks the hook and the rotator in. We're just tucking them in at the back. So when we put the crane down on everything like this, it also acts and it secures the load. So Dimitri's leaving. He's got his manifest, as Moran liked to call it. He's going to go to his job, and we're off. I got one. Go on. I got one for you. I got one that you've never heard before. Go on. The engine was making noise. It was one of the reasons why he stopped. So I'm thinking he's fried the engine. He's cooked it. Do you know what he did? Oh. Go on. He turned up the music so loud he broke the speaker. He could hear the broken speaker. It weren't the engine. Speaker was going or whatever, making noise. Yeah. When I when I grow up, I'm going to buy a flagship model like you. I'm going to buy a V8 like you when I when I grow up. On our way back to the yard now, uh, you heard me talking to Michael saying the, the problem with the Scania, um, we did top up the oil in the morning, but the problem was just there was a speaker gone. Uh, do you know what? I'm going to accept that because I've always told the drivers, the second you see a red warning light on that dashboard, stop the truck immediately. You never know what's going on underneath. You could have hit something. You could have grounded something. The lorry, you do not starve the engine of oil. Like we have to keep oil in the engine. So park up and wait for Scania to come out. That's what repair and maintenance is for. And it turned out that the speaker was damaged and the sound sounded like it and there was oil in the lorry. So do you know what? It wasn't bad but it could have been bad and it wasn't worth the risk. I've just been told STS have turned up and the sweeper is on the back of it. Really excited to see it. Haven't seen it yet. Um, but I think they went past the yard. I mean, they've gone to turn around in the rail yard. So uh, there is a gap in the train and there's plenty of space over there because the material's low. So I'm gonna patiently wait here. Patience, because that's something I'm really good at. I'm having a look in the middle of the yard right, and I can see that Noel is uh, blasting all the dirt off the small shovel because I think he's going to turn round the blade on it. Oh, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. Here's STS. No, that's, that's sick, that's nuts. It looks brand new. Now it has been fully ash filled. I'm loving it, it looks fresh. I can't wait till the new plate paperwork comes. I'm gonna put the plate on it straight away. Loving it. Shout out to SDS. Thank you so much, helping us out again. My lovely sweeper is back in the yard. What does Tesla think? Yeah, I like that. That is good. Smart that enough, yeah? Good. Some difference with a new paint job, innit? Yeah, that is lovely. It's these small bits of joy that I get every day every week, maybe once a month. And this is one of them. Did they clean all the cab out as well? It weren't me. <laughs> but also it weren't you, don't you? Episode 26, Terry the Comedian returns <laughs> with a vengeance. <laughs> Chief. <laughs> Thanks to John Radfords, they actually cleaned it inside out as well. It weren't this clean when it went there. This is ready to start cleaning. Perfect. 
Let's take it for a little spin. If you want to see what my new sweeper looks like, you're going to have to watch the main video. But now we've got it back, we're going to clean the road with it a bit and then we'll be able to create that video for you. I'm going for a drive with my new sweeper. See you in a bit. This is the smaller loading shovel. This is the 566. Now we wore the front of the cutting edge right down. Thankfully, we can turn it round. So Noel used the air gun and he loosened it across here, took them down, and now we need to turn them round. Thankfully, we can use the same nuts and bolts, but because we use them so much across here, this edge is very sharp and part of it is sticking up. So we have to take this little lip off here, that edge, we have to take it off. So when we use the bolts, we get it completely flush to the bucket. If it's not completely flush to the bucket, it will begin to come loose and come away. Using the grinder, we're gonna flatten this end down a bit. Then we're gonna put it back on with this sharp edge. You need to keep doing this so you don't damage the bucket. A cutting edge is the first thing that comes in contact with the ground when you're driving along and you're scraping. If you let the cutting edge wear down, you begin to damage the bucket and we cannot do that. It's Friday morning, Good Friday, bank holiday. I'm in the yard and we have a major problem. Uh, we went to refuel the LH60, grease the bucket, etc. Loads of fault codes have come on it and we can barely move the machine. We can't even track it back up onto the pile. Now, straight away, I called Lee Bear. I got no answer. I sent an email with pictures of the faults and stuff. I had a load of emails come back saying people are on annual leave. I cannot get hold of anyone. There are 22 carriages of material gonna arrive in this yard and I cannot offload them. There's nothing I can do about it. I'm gonna get a huge fine. No one at Lee Bear's answering, and this is a reoccurring problem. Like I, like this, like this kind of stress, like this is no way to live, like this kind of stress. So I'm doing everything in my power to try and get it sorted. Um, and the boys are in, uh, they're doing a bit of work on my office. Um, while I'm trying to wait for someone to call me back or to sort something out, hopefully, hopefully this is them, then I'll, I'll try and see what I can work out. Fortunately, the desk is going really well. That's something that is going really well. Mikey's put these bolts through. So these bolts have been drilled from the outside of the container and they've gone through and the desk will attach to this. So the desk will be basically supported by the frame of the container. So when I move the support at the end and when I jump up and down on the end of the desk, I won't end up flat on my face or on my back. We've got lorries scattered all over the place. Uh, obviously, no, none of the lorries have gone out working today. So we're not used to having all the lorries here and trying to offload a train. All right, listen to this. I've got a story to tell. This is what's happened so far today. So I'm trying to get hold of loads of people at Lee Bear. I can't get hold of anyone. Granted, it's bank holiday. And I had an email saying Lee Bear are closed, like they're fully closed, there's no one there. I've got a train full of material coming. Then Terry gets on the phone. Shout out to Terry Duff. Credit to Terry, yeah? I know I give Terry stick sometimes, but it's a joke. And Terry on his day off, Terry is in the supermarket with Cora, trying to give Fiona some time at home alone before he drops Cora to his uh, parents-in-law. He's in Tesco, Terry's getting on the phone as well, and Terry was making phone calls. Terry got hold of someone at Lee Bear. He got hold of Mark. He got hold of Mark and he was speaking to Mark. Now, from what I understand, Terry and Mark, he got a bit heated. I spoke to Mark. Terry said, I'm out with my kids. I'm trying to get the machine sorted. Mark said the same thing. Two of them got a bit heated. The way it sounds when they see each other, it's beef on site. They're going to fist it out. But I've squashed all of that because we're working towards a common goal. Slowly but surely, every single person that I called in Lee Bear called me back one by one. Even the people, I was desperate, I called everyone. The people in marketing called me back. Everyone called me back. We even had a number for one of the fitters because when he came in the yard, we took his number. We called him and he said, someone needs to authorize me coming out. Bear in mind, Lee Bear are completely closed. So the boss at Lee Bear, he contacted the general manager. The general manager contacted someone else who contacted Mark Franklin. Mark Franklin told the fitter he can come out and he is here and the LA60 is working and the train is being offloaded. Thank you so much. I don't want to dwell on the fact that there's a problem with the machine because there are problems with machines. No matter what machine you buy, no matter how much it costs, um, we're waiting for a part to come on Tuesday. Now, um, the DPF problem 
with the machine, I'm told it's with idling. And when we spec the machine, we didn't have the automatic shut off. I think like when you're in your car and you stop at a set of lights, your car turns itself off and turns it on. Now that is gonna be fitted on the machine next week. But until then, the Liebherr fitter came here, he's got the machine going. Now, instead of him getting it going and leaving, the man has actually sat here to wait here in case there's another problem with the machine to ensure that we get the train offloaded and ensure that tomorrow we can offload the train. So thank you to Liebherr. It's not about the problem, it's about how the problem is resolved. And those people could have all swerved me, they could have ducked me, they could have ignored their phones, they could have behaved like corporate people who don't give a damn, but they didn't. They didn't. All of them helped me and the machine is working and I am thankful for that. So shout out to Terry Duff, shout out to Mark Franklin, shout out to the rest of the team at Liebherr, including Gwen in marketing. Even the lady in marketing called me back and I very much appreciate it. Let's go and have a look at my LH60 working. The lorries aren't going in and out today, so we're not loading any of them. So we don't actually need to leave a gap in the train, which means I can't get round. But what you can see over there, spin for me, Dan, spin for me, spin for me, spin for me, spin for me. You can see the LH60 is offloading. There it is, we're getting the train offloaded. You don't understand the pressure. Imagine, I'm not gonna talk figures. I don't, I don't talk about figures, stuff like that. I try not to. If you imagine this train has 1,650 ton, Try to imagine in your head what that costs per, per tonne. Whatever figure you come up with, imagine if this comes here loaded and it goes back, I will get charged for the train. Plus I'm paying for the machine, plus I'm paying all the boys in the yard who are offloading it. Imagine the sort of catastrophic financial damage that can do. But credit to everyone, we got it going again. And I lost a year of my life for stress. I think we filled the entire primary line going all the way to the end. The train is going far back as the eye can see. Okay. Maybe the primary line isn't completely full. We've got a tiny bit of space left, but not much. Just talking with the engineer, Adrian here, he's showing me, because obviously these have all got telematics in it and they could tell exactly how long it was idling, how long it was working, like everything down to the minute. And I think definitely uh, putting on this uh, auto stop start thing to cut the engine out after a certain amount of time, I think that's gonna be crucial. The way I was taught to use machines, you don't want to keep turning the machine on and off, on and off, on and off. You're going to damage the starter. If you turn the machine on before the train comes, you turn the machine on, uh, you grease the bucket, you let, the, you let it get up to working temperature and then you use it. But uh, apparently the way machines are run has changed and when you're using a machine, everybody wants to save fuel. So you, you turn the engine off because you don't want it to cool down because it's not a working temperature, it's not burning ad blue or anything like that. So maybe I've got a couple of things to learn as well. Train's offloaded, yard's empty, I'm in the gym gonna do some core work. It's 6.05, signing out. I'll see you in the morning. Saturday morning, I'm in the yard, it's 20 past seven. Um, might be a bank holiday weekend, uh, but there's nothing holiday about this. Uh, basically, at the end of the day yesterday, when it had finished offloading, Adrian had a look and there is a crack on the bucket in the LH60. It's not a big crack, but there's a crack. You cannot have that, you cannot have the catastrophe that could happen, that crack could get bigger at any time. Something could happen with a bucket, the bucket could come off, derail the train, it could hurt someone like that. that's a catastrophe. Now, when I was buying the LH60, uh, the guys at Liebherr said, right, you have to buy two buckets. I don't want two buckets. They said, you need two buckets. I do not want two buckets, they're too expensive. You need to take two buckets. I was, I'm in an RM, and then I was dragged to the table, kicking and screaming, and I paid for two buckets. I haven't used the second bucket at all. This morning, that comes good. I'm gonna take the spare bucket, what's never been used, and I'm gonna swap them over, I'm going to take the bucket we've been using, I'm going to take that, I'm going to put that over here and Noel is going to start welding it. We just pulled out the big MIG there, Noel's going to give that a go. This is a massive thing, like a crack in a bucket which is offloading the train. So we're going to address that immediately. Uh, the boys are over here, they're doing a little bit of maintenance on the skip lorries. They're just greasing up the gear a little bit and the train is coming. And Liebherr got here at six o'clock this morning. So Liebherr opened their depot, especially last night. The engineer here, he drove up to Biggleswade. He got the part, he came here at 6 a.m. He's fitting it on the LA60, so there's loads going on. It's, it's, it doesn't help, man. <laughs> What's the problem with the digger? Oh my god, what's the problem with the digger? What? No power. No power? Yeah. What, it's gone into limp mode? Yeah. What does it say on the dash? Not say nothing, just have three lights. What three lights? Oh, Jesus Christ. Has it got ad blue in it? Yeah. Mm. Nearly full. 
nearly full. Mm. Can you get it down? No, it's the engine dead. When I, I no power. Yeah. yeah. Have you turned it off? No, it's on now. Turn it off. Uh, so we've made a plan, having a look at the bucket here. The crack is very small. Perhaps I've overreacted a bit, but it's still maintenance. I don't want this bucket working with a crack. What we need to do, take the bucket off, take it over there, jet wash it down so we can see everything clearly and then take a look around the bucket and weld what we need to weld. I need to look after these buckets because I'm not. I've already bought two, I'm not buying another one. The plan is to take the 926 off the pile and the 926 has just gone into limp mode with emissions again and we can't even get it off the pile. This is brutal, man. Like, why park the loading shovel like that? You see, when I see something like this, the loading shovel park like this with the door open, I try to think to myself, what is the reasoning? What is the rationale behind parking the loading shovel like this in a yard this big and, and leaving the loading shovel like that? Like, I'm, I'm trying to like, ascertain what may have happened, why, how that could have been a good idea. I know it's capable of doing it, but if this is a bit low on oil or a bit low on diesel or something like that, like all of that is draining to like, what? Oh, it's brutal. The world of machines and trains is uh, very unforgiving. Trains are a lot like poorly from Goodfellas. Once you get involved in trains, it's, um, it's very, uh, no matter what, you have to offload. It's like, um, oh, your staff didn't turn up. Huh. So what? Offload me. Ah, you got hit by lightning, huh? So what? Offload me. Ah, your machine's down. So what? Offload me. And no matter what, you have to come up with Paulie's money every week. So basically, no matter what, you have to offload that train every single time it comes. Otherwise, you hold a massive, massive fine. So I'm doing everything in my power to make sure that that doesn't happen to us today. No matter what it takes, we have to offload that train. Having a quick clean up in the yard. If you remember the other day, I had a Zoom call with elected councillors, etc., and they expressed my sincerest apologies to the residents. And to be honest, the feedback's been really good. Uh, they're giving the benefit of the doubt. Uh, some of them have already said they've seen a difference because I decided to um, split the trucks 50% one way, 50% the other way. And I had a chat with the drivers about being courteous, irrespective of what sort of day they're having, because at the end of the day, uh, people don't realize people driving lorries, they're also human beings as well. They have bad days. Positive response from the people in the local area and we'll keep trying to work together with them. Um, I want to get on with the people in the local area. I don't want to fall out with them. I don't want them to see Asheville trucks and start rolling their eyes and have something bad to say. So um, glad I took the time to do it. And it's always better to work with people. Always better to work with them and compromise and come to an arrangement. Right, so we've managed to get this over here. So we have the new one here and we have the used one there. It's used, it's not old. We'll try to call it old. It's used, it's not old. I've just realized the scrapers are still on this. Uh, basically, I've spec these buckets that we can also pick up muck and load muck on the train and these scrapers inside clean out the inside of the bucket when you've got sticky clay, but we don't have any clay and these are like a hindrance when you're doing the type of stone we are. So we're gonna have to take these out first. Apparently, uh, the 926 had a couple of uh, errors on it about the battery. Apparently that's working, so we are getting there. We'll just close the bucket a little bit to take some pressure off it. Aaron, move my gun there just in case you... Yeah, yeah, move your gun, but leave my hands. <laughs> <laughs> Move my gun, you know. <laughs> That's our train going past, going to turn round. And as you can see, we're not ready for it, so it's going to be a race against time. <sighs> this is some serious techers. Tell me when to move. Are you coming, yeah? yeah. Yep. <laughs> Victory is ours! <laughs> oh. oh, wow, okay. <laughs> yeah. One, two, three! We're just testing the bucket now. We've got grease in there. We've got the scrapers out. 
Let's have a good look here. Checking for leaks. Doesn't look like we've got any leaks. We look completely dry. We're completely dry. Perfect, no leaks at all. We look good to go. Train is gonna be here any second. Moving the shovel around, get this back on the pile. Uh, get these scraper bars out the way. Take this bucket, bring this bucket over into the repair bay. We haven't got enough time before the train comes in uh, to get this moved into the other yard. So we're just gonna take this and put this over here now for safekeeping so the train can back in and we can get offloading. Uh, then we'll pick this up today, tomorrow, day after, and then move it into repair bay. Important thing to know is that the brand new bucket is on the L860 and the L860 is repaired and good to go. And the 926 also is ready to go. Those faults have come off the dash. So we're winning, we're definitely winning. for lifting when we want to move it we'll just leave that on there now I'll get everything else out the way look at my lovely bucket working that's it for Asheville Weekly episode 26 I think we can all agree now that my desk is an A not a G or a 6 I went on an Easter egg hunt and I didn't find any eggs but I managed to find the spare bucket for the LH60 and the LH60 went down on Good Friday but it resurrected to save us all in three hours, not three days. Click here for the Asheville website. Click here to subscribe to our channel. Click here to see a video on how I plan to lose weight and get back in shape. And click here for last week's episode, which was number 25. Can you imagine? Six months, every Sunday. Oh.